for the glory of Jesus Christ. going to look at very quickly we're going to look about insanity what the bible has to say about people who are insane mad or lunatic now here we have a guy that's out of his skull and i mean he has a serious problem and of course we have the christian on the one side that has the bible and we have the psychiatrist on the other side which of course many of whom reject the bible now we're going to not all of them i realize there's some christian psychiatrists, but psychiatry by and large as a rule most schools of psychiatry uh, reject the Bible. Okay, now turning your Bible, if you will, to 1 Samuel chapter 21, and we're going to take our text here in verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 13, it says here about David. It says in verse 12, and David uh, laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Echish, the king of Gath, and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself, or pretended, to be mad in their hands. He pretended like he was crazy. I mean, he acted like that, only it was uh, pretend. And feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, you see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? All right, let's pray. With every head bowed, every eye closed, and uh, tonight we're going to look at madness. We'll see what the Bible has to say about insanity. Father, we thank thee now for your goodness. We thank thee for this opportunity to see what the Bible has to say. Help us to understand these things, that we might give an answer to every man for the reason, the hope that lies within us. Help us to understand these things now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now very quickly tonight, we're going to look at madness or insanity and uh, what the Bible has to say about it. And uh, you better find out what the Bible has to say about it, but I'm telling you, of course, what's going on in the world today is a mess, brother. It's a mess. And uh, the next message we're going to look at, at uh, we're going to be looking at schizophrenia and other things. But uh, the world's in a mess. The psychiatrists are in a mess. They had a big conference of 7,000 psychiatrists, and it's the biggest dogfight, conflict, and... Uh, and, and mess you've ever seen in your life. All right, well, here are 7,000 psychiatrists from all over the world. Now, first of all, you need to understand that this book that you have in your hand is the best text on psychological themes in the world today. God knows more about your mental condition than any living or past human being on the face of the earth. Now, notice there are certain things you need to understand. First of all, there are certain errors related to psychiatry and to in mental illness and being mad or insane. Uh, I, I had a whole list of uh, articles here that I've been collecting about the psychiatrist. Now, a psychiatrist is different than a psychologist. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor, and that's why you got to pay them a lot more money if you go to a psychiatrist rather than a psychologist. But there are a lot of errors about the insane. And uh, I have here a whole list of uh, things about these psychiatrists. I worked in a hospital in Pensacola, Florida, and every now and then I'd have to work in the psychiatric ward. And boy, that was a trip, man. That was a trip. Uh, you you ought to get in there. I mean, you ought to get, you know, down in the nitty-gritty and rub elbows with these guys and be with them day in and day out and hour on hour in dealing with this problem. i tell you what, a lot of those psychiatrists that came to that doctor were uh, came to that hospital were in worse shape than some of their patients now uh, i have some interesting articles here and i guess i probably should tell this uh this is one joke about these psychiatrists uh it says uh and it kind of explains the whole field about psychiatry and mental illness and the joke goes like this it says uh, a neurotic is a person that builds a castle in the clouds and the psychotic person lives, or at least he thinks he lives, in the castle. And the psychiatrist collects the rent on the castle. And, and they do. They do. All right, now I have here a list of articles. And the first article here that they did was they found out that the psychiatrist, they did a whole, uh, the government did a whole study, and they found out of all the different groups, all the different groups, medical groups, that uh, perpetrate frauds on the government, 
They said the worst group in the medical profession that cheated the government by lying and every other way were the psychiatrists. Study, new study reveals that psychiatrists cheat the government more than any other doctors. And then the second article I came across here about these characters was that uh, many uh, are crazy too. <laughs> that there's a greater, uh, greater uh, statistic on psychiatrists actually going insane, going out of their skulls, having to be locked up. And then the third article I came across here, which was very interesting, it says that the 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 uh, the psychiatrist, and this was a uh, this was a a psychiatrist himself. He said that the psychiatrist and the witch doctors treat their patients pretty much the same way. The guy is very interesting. The guy would say that because he talked about himself. And uh, his name is, uh, just for the sake of, uh, you can write this down, Dr. E. Fuller Torrey, the noted author and staff member at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Washington, D.C. Dr. Stanley said that when you compare what witch doctors, how they treat their patients, and how psychiatrists treat their patients, he said there are more similarities than differences. And this guy, a psychiatrist, <laughs> And uh, he says this, both treat the whole family. Both work at correcting a bad behavior. And then he goes down, he said they both use analyzing dreams, and he goes through a, a number of, of analysis of how which doctor treats her patients, how psychiatrists, and he said, you know, they're pretty much the same, which is kind of interesting. All right, now, what does the Bible have to say about it? The Bible tells us in Luke, in Luke chapter 11, and Luke chapter 11 and verse 52, the Bible says there, Jesus said, Woe unto you lawyers, because you have taken away the key of knowledge. The Bible is the key of knowledge. The Bible is the key to psychiatry, to psychology. The Bible is the key to sociology. The Bible is the key to anthropology, to geology, to astronomy, to every science, to every discipline. That book is the key. It's the key. You get over this crowd here, you know, I, I remember I was working in a uh, hospital, they had one psychiatrist there, and uh, he had a terrible, I mean, he was a chain smoker, boy, he just, you know, <laughs> just, just nervous, man, and just, and then one burn up, and he'd light another one, you know, he'd light the next cigarette off the one that's burning up, and uh, the guy was a chain smoker, and he says, you know, he says, I don't know how a man could be dominated by four inches of tobacco. Well, you know, how is a guy like that going to help somebody else? Uh, the Bible tells us that the Bible is the key to science, the key to, dis the key to psychology, and the key to insanity. Uh, when you talk to these guys, it's real interesting talking to them. Uh, they'd say, uh, I think, I think it maybe is this. Uh, we hope, we hope that might, that, that, that uh, may be the case. And, uh, and some of them are out now con artists. I, I was reading one psychiatrist said, what you do is says, you promise them a cure, and then you never give them the cure, and then they just are your patient for the next 20, 30 years. All right, now let's look at what the Bible has to say. In the first place, in the first place, the Bible says some people are faking it, okay? They are faking insanity for whatever reason to get off something, and usually it has to do with crime. Uh, I, uh, a lot of times they're faking it, uh, and regardless whether they're faking it or not, if they've committed a crime, the Bible says they're to be, uh, they're to be uh, treated according as a criminal. <coughs> I have an article here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, there's some terrible, terrible mistakes uh, made with insan uh, dealing with uh, mentally ill and insanity. I, ha I have two articles here. One man was locked up. A sane man was locked up for 45 years by that crowd right there, the psychiatrist. This guy, his name was, uh, his name was Edward. Edward was a deaf mute, Edward Torrey. And uh, he was a deaf mute, he couldn't talk, he couldn't speak. And so they got in a fight with another boy when he was about 10 years old and just beat the kid to a pulp. And, and they, they tried to ask him, well, what'd you, what'd you hit him for? What'd you, you know, what'd you beat this guy up for? And so he, he just, he couldn't, couldn't hear what they said, and he couldn't speak. He was a deaf mute. And so they said, well, he's mentally retarded. Just lock him up. 
And for 45 years, this guy, and by the way, the, the, when they went back and investigated, they found out the kid was being robbed. And that's why he beat the guy up, because he was trying to rob him. And then they had another case here. A lady was locked up for 28 years. Carolyn Clark, who was not mentally ill, was locked up for 28 years by the bureaucrats and the psychiatrists. Now, when it comes to crime, uh, we notice here the Bible says some people are faking it. We find here that uh, David, when he caught in a bind there, and he thought he was going to get, you know, uh, getting some bad treatment from the king, so he pretended like he was insane, and they let him loose. Now, there's a big difference. In the Bible, insanity is never a plea for a criminal act. If somebody commits a criminal act, they are always treated as a criminal, regardless if they are insane or not. And uh, that's very important, because in the Bible system of crime and punishment, insanity is never a plea. It's either guilty or not guilty, and punishment accordingly. Now, I have a case here of a lady named uh, Sylvia Segrist. And uh, Sylvia Segrist, uh, she was a criminal. And she was rebellious and wicked as the devil. And uh, she could put on a pretty, sh pretty good show, and they, they, I guess she acted like she was crazy. But anyway, they locked her, they locked her up, and then they turned her loose, said she was schizophrenic. And so they, she stabbed a lady, and they locked her up again, and then they let her out again. And she tried to kill a couple people, and then they let her out again. Now listen, if somebody commits a crime, insanity is not a plea in the Bible. You need to, you need to study what the Bible says about crime and punishment. And uh, this lady here, so finally they, her psychiatrist, who's the one ought to really be locked up, he turned her loose. And so uh, she told her mother nobody was going to tell her what to do. She went down to the Springfield Mall in Springfield, Pennsylvania, and she got a 22 caliber carbine and started firing at the shoppers. And she said, nobody's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> and she shot ten people. And she killed a 64-year-old man and a two-year-old baby. You know who the criminal is here? Not the lady. It's the courts and the judges who think that they know more than God does when he talks about crime and punishment. And they turn that lady loose. Ten people are in a hospital, and two of them are buried out in the cemetery. The Bible tells us a person commits a crime regardless if they're mentally ill. They are locked up. Some of them are faking it, and sometimes they're not faking it. But regardless, like Hinckley. Uh, Hinckley shot President Reagan, and uh, they had a judge trial. Well, of course, I mean, they had a jury trial. Of course, in the Bible, there's no such thing as a jury trial. you got to study that one out. And so they had, had these, uh, the jury said, Hinckley was innocent by reason of insanity. And the judge said, what? If it had been a judge trial, like the Bible says, he would have been condemned. He had been found guilty. All right, the first thing is sometimes people are faking it. And regardless of whether they're faking it or not, insanity is never, never a plea. All right, now sometimes the Bible says these people are demon-possessed. Possessed. And uh, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't put that, with these, these guys here, you know, these guys over here, they don't believe in demon possession. Uh, a friend of ours down in, in Florida, she was at the State University, and she was taking a psychology course there at, uh, down there in Miami, some, some, you know, some state college. And she was really funny because they had a psychiatrist, you know, and he was talking to this patient. And they had a video camera, and they were videotaping the session. And, they know, and so while he's talking to her, all of a sudden the woman is attacked by something invisible. And she reached up her hand and saying, invisibly grabbed her hand, but you could see it push the skin and, and push her hand down. And she's standing there like this, and this thing hits her in the face, like that, and the skin, you can't see what it was, but just something invisible pushes in the skin and knocks her teeth out, and the blood came out. Of course, the Bible says, demons are real. And of course, these psychiatrists just kind of, well, uh, 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 that's, that's some kind of a psychic force. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says demons are real. Sometimes some of these people, their problem is they're possessed by devils. And there are several cases of that in the Bible, like the one mentioned there in John chapter 10 and verse 20. Then sometimes they're mistakes, they're mistakes. And a person has an unusual experience, 
And uh, the psychiatrist can't explain it, so they said the guy's uh, insane. Well, maybe he isn't insane. Maybe it really happened. Maybe it really happened. Dr. Vargas, a friend of ours one time, they have an unusual experience. And in Acts chapter 12 there, uh, Peter has been arrested, and uh, Rhoda goes to, the, goes to the door and says, Peter's at the door. And they said, she's mad. She's mad. She's crazy. Well, she wasn't crazy. She just had an unusual, unusual experience. And, uh, and she was right. <laughs> they said she was mad. She wasn't mad. Dr. Vargas one time said, I said, Dr. Vargas, um, he's a medical doctor over here, a Christian man, an older man, about 60-something. And I said, Dr. Vargas, a friend of mine been hallucinating, seeing things over in the corner there. And I said, you know, imagining and, and hallucinating. And he said to me, he said, well, maybe he isn't hallucinating. Maybe he is seeing something. All right? And uh, so then we find that sometimes they have an unusual experience, and that's a, a mistake, a mistake. Then in Acts chapter 26, the Bible tells us there that when Paul appeared before uh, the king, the king said, much studying doth make thee mad, Paul, much studying. A person doesn't go mad from being from studying. Uh, that's, that's an error, that's a mistake. Uh, they, they become, uh, they don't go insane from too much study. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, much study is a weariness of the flesh. But it never says much study will cause you to go insane. Then the Bible tells us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in the, in the New Testament, in the times of the apostles, they thought they, uh, people who spoke in tongues would sometimes be accused of being insane. Now that was a a New Testament uh, special manifestations. The Bible says, there, though there be tongues, they shall cease. And it is a historic fact that the biblical manifestation of tongues, where they spoke in other languages, did in fact cease. All right, now, what are the real causes? These are five mistakes dealing with insanity. Now, what causes insanity? The Bible mentions nine nine specific things that will cause a person to end up like that. In the first place, turn in your Bible to Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 31, here we have a case where the king of Babylon went off his rocker. I mean, brother, he went stark, raving, mad, and he wasn't mad for a day. He didn't have a fit or a convulsion. He went insane for seven years, for seven years. Notice what the Bible says here in Daniel chapter 4. And in Daniel chapter 4, the king had, of course, he had all the power, and he had all the money. He could do whatever he wanted, and that can be a dangerous thing. Uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Notice what it says here in verse 31. That while the word was yet in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men. Thy dwelling shall be with a beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as an ox. And seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and he giveth it to whosoever he will. Now notice what happens here. The Bible tells us here that God struck him insane. God smote him, and he went out of his mind. And the tragedy is, it could have been avoided because of his sin. Sin will cause you to go mentally ill. Notice what it says here, Daniel, and, and the thing was, about the king, the king here, in this case, he could have avoided it, you see, and and he was warned in a dream that this was going to happen, and then, and then he asked Daniel about the dream. Notice what it says here, in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 27, Daniel says this, he said, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be accepted unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness. He said, Quit doing what you're doing, and do, the, and, and do right, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. He said, King, you're headed for a fall. Your sin's going to get you. Watch out! And he said, no, no, man, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. No, it's okay, it's just a dream, just a dream. And then a voice came from heaven and zap, he ended up like that. 
He ended up like that. You know why? Sin. Sin. Sin will cause you to go off your rocker, cause you to go mentally ill. All right? Then the Bible talks about something else. Those are says here in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 17, as we saw before, Matthew chapter 17, it said he had an unclean spirit. Demon possession is a reality, and the Bible tells us there, sometimes, as we've already gone over up here, demon possessed, demon possessed. Sometimes, mistakenly, they call it demon possession, but in this case, it was, in fact, demon possession. Now, notice here in Matthew chapter 4, sometimes it might be a physical problem. The only way you're going to find out what's really going on is to open the Bible, open the key of knowledge, and find out what's going on. Now, look, turn there, and notice that it might be a physical, physical condition. Turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 4. And Matthew chapter 4 here, that lays out why people become sick. Uh, I took a course at the University of West Florida. When I took this course at the University of West Florida, we had to read an article by Dr. Rudolf Bultmann. And Dr. Bullman wrote this article called Demythologizing the Bible. And, of course, uh, the problem was him, wasn't the Bible. And uh, he said, oh, the Bible's full of myths and legends and all that sort of thing. And he said, he said, for example, he said, the Bible says all sickness is caused by demons. Well, I'm sure Dr. Bullman's probably in hell right now. And he found out that he was wrong a little bit too late. But notice here what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says this. It says there are different reasons why a person might be sick. There are different reasons why they might be mentally sick or mentally ill. Notice here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him, they brought unto Jesus, all the people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. Notice here, it says sometimes people have a disease. They are sick. You got that? I picked up an article here some time ago, uh, printed, I think it was in Time Magazine, it said, you're not crazy, you just might be sick. Robert Young was treated by this crowd over here for a long time, by the, oh, I guess 20, 30 years, man. I mean, he paid out thousands of dollars, this bunch over here. And, uh, and then they found out he had a hormone imbalance in his blood. He had a chemical problem. And when they straightened that out, he wasn't depressed anymore. And they found out his problem was he was sick. He had a disease. They have one disease in Central America, it's a terrible disease, uh, they have the amoeba. And what the amoeba do, it does, it gets in, your, gets in your intestines and causes a lot of problems, then it gets into your liver. And then from your liver, it goes to your brain. And when it goes into your brain, it causes you to go insane. Now the guy's problem isn't, uh, isn't psychological as such, it's physical, he is sick, okay? Now notice what it says here. They brought unto him all those who were taken with the divers diseases. Maybe they had, uh, maybe had the amoebas, amoebas, or some other thing. Uh, you know, Alzheimer's disease. Person goes out there physically. They say sometimes it's uh, aluminum gets in the brain and causes some of those problems. All right, divers diseases and torments. Then says those who are possessed with devils. We looked at that here, Matthew chapter 17. Okay, and it says when those that were lunatic. Now, this is very interesting, uh, interesting word. Uh, that's not an idiomatic expression. That's a, that's a scientific statement. Notice here it says lunatic. So I looked that up and I found out it literally, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24, the word is moon madness. And I've got a book called The Lunar Effect. Talk about the, when the full moon comes up. So there are more suicides. There are more robberies. There are more people admitted to mental institutions. And it talks about that people are actually struck by the moon. And I know a lot of Christian psychiatrists, they would never go for that. Of course, they don't, a lot of them don't believe the Bible know how or anyway. And uh, notice what it says here. The Bible tells us when you get saved, there's a promise. And the promise is in Psalm 121, verse 6, it says, 
the moon shall not smite thee if you trust the Lord. I picked up an article by one uh, Japanese medical doctor, and he said they have actually proved that during the phase of the full moon, it physically changes the chemical composition in your blood. It affects the tide, it affects the plants, it affects the animals, and it affects you. The Bible says some that were lunatic, and the Greek there, I said, what's the Greek? What's the Greek? Yeah, the Greek is moon madness. Then the Bible mentions something else. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, in verse uh, 7, it says there's another thing that will cause people to go insane, mentally ill, and that is injustice. I want us to look at this. This is very, very important. A lot of parents make a terrible mistake uh, when they're raising their kids, and, and the mistake they make is a well-meaning, but, but unfortunately uh, not well thought through, uh, they mean well when they try to straighten out everything for your kids, but let me tell you something. You need to teach children how to personally deal with injustice. Uh, I read an article here, I think it's in the Reader's Digest, and it says, life is not fair. You need to teach your kids how to handle life when it's not fair. Now that's what it says here. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and verse 7, it says this. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. He says, surely oppression, injustice. I picked up an article, said this man was working in a factory, and we had a case here in Puerto Rico very similar to this, just over here, say, I'm a, a place called San Sorial. And this guy's working in a factory, and uh, he tried to do the best he could, and he did his job, but his boss, just, just kind of, his supervisor didn't like him, just personality conflict, and he'd always grade him down, and it was unfair, and it was oppression, and it was unjust, and, and he went along there, and the promotion came up, and they wouldn't give him the promotion, although he deserved it, and he earned it, and, and finally, uh, something happened there, and it really wasn't his fault, a piece of machinery broke down or something, and they fired him. Oh, it just, just wasn't right at all. It, just, it was just wrong, injustice, oppression. And they fired the guy, I think it was right about before Christmas time, and the guy was so angry that they kept doing him wrong and treating him wrong that he went home, he got his shotgun, he went in and shot the supervisor, he shot a couple of the guys he worked with, and he shot his boss, and then he committed suicide. You know what happened? He ended up like that. The guy went out of his skull, man. You know why? He never learned to deal with injustice. We had a case right over here. A guy walked in a bank that he used to work in, just killed three or four people, same kind of thing, uh, bad treatment and all this sort of thing. Uh, most parents make a terrible mistake. Uh, my kids here some time ago, they said, uh, Dad said so-and-so so happened down there at the school and said that ain't right, you know. I said, good good. <laughs> what do you mean good? I said, right now, you better learn to deal with injustice. And they had an article in Reader's Digest that said, you need to teach your children that life is not fair. And most parents, they'll go along and say, oh, oh, Mary, did the kindergarten teacher say something ugly to you? Let me go down here and straighten out the teacher. And they go down to school, make a big fuss, and get it all straightened out. And something else happens over here in the neighborhood, and some kid does something that's not right, you know. And they say, oh, I'll fix him. I'll fix him, Johnny. I'll get him. I'll get him. And then they straighten that out. They said, no, you, you don't need to. You should not go around straightening out everything. Now, sometimes you might have to do that. But don't do it all the time. And you say, all right, son, this is your opportunity to learn how to deal with injustice and to find out that first of all life is not fair first thing you need to learn is life is not fair and when it doesn't turn out your way when a person gets saved God gives you the promise in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 all things work together for good but if you need to learn to handle injustice and let God show you blessings in the midst of in justice. I was working in a working in a, a paint factory, it's the Earl Shives auto painting place. And the, the the manager was a crook and he had two jobs without making out tickets. And so uh, I wouldn't take the money. I said, no, no, I'm, you just keep it. I'm not taking any of the money you're making out on these jobs that you make out a ticket on. And uh, you know, a little extra bonus on the side there, you know, stealing from the company. And so I got fired. 
I got fired because I refused to take stolen money. And I said, well, all right. God said all things work together for good. And you know what? The Lord gave me a better job. And I didn't let the injustice end me up like that. <laughs> See? All right, now there's another thing the Bible talks about. And the Bible talks about in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 50. And in Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 38. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38, it says, Their idols, their idols have made them mad. Idolatry will cause you to go crazy. Uh, Adolf Hitler uh, was a Roman Catholic from the time he was a little boy and took his first communion and bowed down in front of the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and St. Bartholomew and Christopher and all that. Uh, the Bible says they're mad, they're insane upon their idols. And brother... I believe he was insane. I also think he was demon-possessed, but at least he was probably insane and a madman. And the Bible says they're, idol they're idols that make them mad. Then in Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 7, it says that alcohol, I want you to turn there, alcohol will cause a person to go insane. Jeremiah chapter 51. Notice what it says here in Jeremiah chapter 51. In Jeremiah chapter 51, now we call that in... Uh, the vernacular, it says the guy's got the DTs. That means delirium tremors. It says here in Jeremiah chapter uh, 51, and in verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7, it says this. It says, uh, Babylon hath a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Now here it's talking about uh, political power and some other things. But it's also true of, and you can find it in the book of Proverbs, it says... Uh, you know, guy staggers, he can't talk, and he acts like a, uh, an insane person. And he, he's mad or insane because of alcohol. Uh, the Bible's against drinking any alcohol. You drink alcohol, it goes into your stomach, goes into your, into your uh, blood system, and dead ends in the capillaries of your brain. I read an article on Reader's Digest said, Bad news for social drinkers, one can of beer destroys 20,000 brain cells, permanent brain damage. And it says... They're mad. They're mad. They're insane. Yeah, they are. They are. And you keep on, it'll burn your brain out, brother. I mean, it'll burn it up. And it says the only difference between a sot drunk and a social drinker was one of degree. They did an autopsy on a guy's brain that was just a social drinker, and they found blotches here and burned out part there. And it caused you go, in the end, you'll go insane. you end up with a DT, delirium tremors. You'll be hallucinating, imagining things. Then in Chronicles, it talks about fighting against the Jewish people and fighting against God's people will cause you to go insane. In Chronicles, it says they'll go insane. And in 1 Samuel chapter 19, making a promise to God and swearing in the name of the Lord and then breaking it will cause you to go insane. You see, King Saul was out trying to kill David because God wanted David to be king. And the Bible tells us there that one time David came down and he, he, he caught him in a cave. He, the king was asleep and he went in there and he said, Go ahead, David. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. He said, No, no, no. I'm not going to put my hand against the Lord's anointed. He was anointed by Samuel the prophet and I'm not going to kill him. My, my God will have to kill him. And so he got up there and he got his, he got his wine, his uh, bottle of water and his, I think his coat and he stood way out on the hill and he says, Hey, Saul! He said, I could have killed you, but I didn't. Now listen, and then King Saul says, As the Lord lives, David, I promise I will not try to kill you. Better watch that. You make a promise to God, you better keep it. And the Bible tells us, he, so King Saul felt you know, convicted in his own soul. He went back to Jerusalem. And so they said to him one time, they said, Hey, King, David is trapped back there in the wilderness. Now's your opportunity. Go get him. He said, Yeah, yeah, I'll get him. I'll get him. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You made a promise to God back here. He said, yeah, I'll get him, I'll get him, I'll get him. And he went out there to get him, and the Bible says God smote him, and he started wallowing in the ground, foaming at the mouth, tearing off his clothes, and he winded up like that. You know why? He made a promise to God and he broke it. And last of all, last of all, 
And in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 44, in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 25, witchcraft. Witchcraft will cause you to go insane. You start dabbling around with the Ouija boards and astrology and that sort of thing, and it will cause you to go mentally, cause you to end up mentally ill. I have an article here. It says, Psychic powers send thousands to the madhouse. Uh, it says here that getting involved in these things will cause you to go mentally ill. Thousands of people start messing around with that stuff. Oh, there's nothing to it, nothing to it, nothing to it. And the Bible tells us here, notice, turn in your Bible there, to Isaiah chapter 44. And the Bible tells us here in Isaiah chapter 44 and in verse 25, it makes a very, very important statement. You say, well, I, I didn't think astrology was important. I worked in a hospital in Pensacola, Florida, and there was a nurse there that said she was a Christian. She said she was saved. And the first thing she did every morning was read her horoscope. Yeah, she's probably in a nut house right now. Notice what it says here in Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 25. That frustrates the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad. You got that? Diviners, that's witchcraft, astrology, Ouija boards, all that kind of stuff. And maketh the diviners mad that turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolishness. And the Bible says there, witchcraft and astrology and Ouija boards will cause you to end up like that. But there's a tremendous promise the Bible gives us when a person gets saved. It says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. The greatest protection you can have from mental illness is, first of all, to get saved. Because God's will is not for anybody to end up like this. You have these people here? Sin, uh, not obey, unclean spirit. Uh, dealing with idolatry and alcohol, fighting against God's people, but sin, but the whole thing is sin. But the Bible says, when you get saved, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. You want to end up like this right here? Or you want to end up like that? You know what you need to do? You need to get saved. You need to get in a good church. And you need to serve God, and you end up like that. And you don't get saved, and you don't get up, get in a good church, and you don't serve God, you might end up like that. You won't have a sound mind. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you now for you.